Welcome to Sickbaggers YouTube channel. I'm Steve. Today I'm going to show you how to install Dakota digital gauges on this street glide back here. Now this is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time to either my road glide or my street glide and I just haven't pulled the trigger on it yet. But I got a buddy that brought his bike over. He ordered the gauges so we're going to put them on his bike today. And if you've watched my channel in the past you'll know that our instructional videos we try to cover every single step A to Z start to finish. So that's what you're going to get today, a complete install on a street glide. Now on a road glide, it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be kind of the same process, just, just where your gauges are. You got two in the fairing, you got two in your nacelle. So you got a couple of different things there you have to deal with when you're doing a road glide. Hopefully in the future, if I get these ordered for my road glide, we'll do a road glide install because it is a little bit different than a street glide. So if you've never heard of Dakota Digital Gauges, jump on over to their website. They got a slew of different gauges, right? You can do all kinds of stuff with these gauges are pretty cool but it is going to take your basic kind of needle gauges and make them all digital so it's very important to note that you either need to write down or take a picture of your odometer before you remove your gauges that way you know how many miles are exactly on your bike now the ecm will send that information over to the gauges but you have to manually accept it into the gauges so now the first thing we're going to do is remove the outer fairing of course so we can get to the gauges now underneath this fairing we've got an aftermarket audio kit that's in here if you do have any kind of amp or anything up on the amp tray you will have to remove that get it out of the way to get to the gauges today i'm going to cut the camera and get that amp stuff out of the way because they're all different and they're all installed different so you're just going to have to get underneath your fairing and see what you have before you do this so we're going to start on the inside of the fairing you've got a torx 27 here and a torx 27 here we're going to go ahead and remove those now you'll see you got two different size bolts you got a long one you got a short one long one in the top short one in the bottom we're going to do that to both sides of the bike now before we start getting all break dancing and removing this fairing we're going to go ahead and protect our front fender so doesn't matter what you have if you got a fender protector if you got a blanket a towel whatever you got make sure you put it on the fender now at the top windshield screws all the bikes are pretty well different maybe you don't have any trim you just got oem on there just check your bolts up here these are torx 27 again but then again yours may be different we're going to take the outside screws out first now those two bolts are short the middle one is pretty long you can see there that it's loose. So this bike has several lights on the outer fairing. So you're gonna need to watch that too. Um, it's got lights in here, it's got lights up here, it's got lights around the headlights. So there's several things that need to be disconnected after I take this fairing down. So with me in front of the bike, I'm gonna get this bolt out, but I'm pushing on the fairing. I'm just gonna throw that in my pocket real quick. I'm gonna let this slide forward. I'm gonna take that windshield out. I'm gonna reach in and start disconnecting all of these lights. So after we get the fairing off, we're gonna take our vent off. This just basically slides into place, matches the groove on the top right here. You've got a screw here and you've got a screw here. Should also be a Torx 27. Once those two screws are out, we're just gonna pull this forward like this and that vent comes off. Now you can see we're getting a lot more access to our gauges, right? So just to clarify a few things, these gauges are behind this metal amp tray right here. So I've got a lot of the amp wires kind of out of the way and pushed down here, but you got your main harness wire that comes in here and runs across the back. And it's got a little couple of little Christmas tree clips right here. So if you got a little plastic tool like this, it's just a little dash kit tool that you can pick up at Harbor Freight, Amazon, wherever. You're gonna wanna slide that back in there and pop that little Christmas tree off so you can get that out of the way. All the tools that I'm using today will be listed down in the description as well. So if you need some of this stuff, you can click on the link. It'll take you over to probably Amazon or something, wherever I pick, um, and you can pick up these tools if you need them. So that's just a little Christmas tree clip that you're popping out right there. Those just, and those will pop back in later. Now with all of that being said, to get this tray loose, and out of the way we've got a bolt here and a bolt here and you've got that on both sides in order to get to those back bolts back there it's best to go ahead and get this harness out of the way because getting to that back bolt back there if this harness is connected to this gauge is kind of a pain in the butt so just go ahead and unclip it from the top of the gauge unclip it here unclip it here and move this out of the way now, like i said i just use one of these little hook screwdrivers just because i don't have fingernails but that allows me to grab the top of that and pull up on it and then pull back on it and disconnect that. So these have the clip on the top, 
this has the clip on the sides you cannot mess this harness up by the way this will only reach a certain way and you're not taking the whole thing off you're just going to pull it back here out of the way so when we get ready to reconnect the big dog right here it's going to be right there you can't mess that up So with those four removed, you got one on each side of the gauge right here. So we're gonna swap over to a Torx 20 and go ahead and take those two screws out. I am just gonna go ahead and pop these two little Christmas trees right here, just so we got room to move this this tray up and forward you got one on each side just like that now you have one more bolts right here it's on the back side of your glove compartment where your usb port goes through that little silver screw right there i'm gonna take that out get in there and get a hold of that now from there we can lift this tray up right pull it forward and take it out this gauge here, we got a screw here, screw here, and screw down here. Same thing on this one, here, here, and here. And of course, the one in the middle, the only one we have left is the center one because we already took those two out to get that tray out of the way. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and take a towel, shove it up in there and make yourself a little shelf like that. Because if I drop any of these screws and they go down in there between the radio and the glove compartment, it's gonna be hell fishing that out or I'm gonna have to take a lot of stuff out to get to it. So now that gauge is out. Now this one over here, so we're gonna move the towel over here. Then you have your center gauge. We're gonna pull that out. Now we're gonna start preparing our new gauges to go into the bike. You have to get the backside bezel off because this is where your screws go in that attach it. So right here on the front, you're gonna see these little clips that go all the way around. You can take your fingernail and just push those out like that. Just push it forward. Just like that. Once you have that beauty ring off the front, now you can slide that gauge right out of the housing. The gauge labeled number one is gonna go into the black cup and you can see the two holes on the back. Can't mess this up which way to put it in. It'll only go in one way like that. You want to make sure that your wiring clip is at the bottom. We're going to put our little bezel back on. Just going to snap that back in real carefully like that. And that one's ready to go back in the bike. Number two gauge in the white housing. So flip this around. Put it in. Line it up at the holes. Clips at the bottom. Go ahead and put our bezel back on. That one is ready to go back in the bike. Now your center gauge cluster, when you pull this out, these bezels are more than likely gonna be stuck to the gauge. You just simply peel these off just like that. There's just a foam on there. It's not really a sticky tape, but just over time and pressure, they stick to the gauge. Now back on the bike, you wanna go ahead and set those back in. Foam facing out, so your gauge goes up against that foam. I'm gonna set this up in here, run our screw in. All of the screws up here on the fairing are gonna to be torqued eight to 12 inch pounds. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and set our amp tray back in place. Just like that. Make sure this is on the other side of that. And go ahead and get those screws ran in. Now we just have the remaining two screws that go through the amp tray and into the gauge and into the inner fairing. All right, now we're gonna be moving on to the oil temperature sensor. Now this is on a Milwaukee 8, this is just going to replace your oil plug. So when you have to change your oil, you just simply unplug this and you take this out, 
put it back in, plug it back in, and you've got your sensor again. You'll also notice inside the hardware kit, there's this brass piece and another rubber O-ring. This is gonna be used for the 14 to 16 models. Right next to your oil drain plug is gonna be another plug that you can pull and put this in. But as far as the Milwaukee 8s go, you're going to use your actual oil drain plug. So if you're doing the 14 to 16, just pay attention to the directions that come in the kit. It tells you exactly how to put this piece on. This is tapered, so it goes one way, and you're gonna use that O-ring. But for us, we're gonna take the oil plug out as quick as we can. We're gonna let that drop, and we're gonna put this in, so we try not to lose too much oil. It's gonna be a little messy. It's gonna get all over our hands, but that's just how it goes. It's either that, or you do a whole oil change. So if we get up here and we look underneath the bike, this is our oil drain plug here. And this bike has a center stand on it, so that's what that wire is. Yours is not going to have that unless you're running a center stand. But we just push that out of the way. That's our oil drain plug. This one over here comes out at an angle. This is not the one. On the clutch side of the bike, we're going to take a 5 8 and remove that. Like I said, we're going to lose a little bit of oil. But it's not a big deal. We're going to pull that out. And we're going to get our sensor put right back in there. Now from here we're going to take our plug, we're going to plug it in, we're going to run this wire over alongside this frame and up the neck. So I'll show you that. Now if you feel alongside inside your frame here, you should have several wires. If you don't, go ahead and just zip tie it to the frame itself. So you're going to bring this straight over, I'm going to zip tie it like that and we're just going to run it forward like that up to the front of the bike. So on the street line, you just want to make sure that you leave plenty of slack right in here in the neck area so you can turn the handlebars and the whole fairing and everything without pulling this wire tight. So for now, we're just feeding it up from the neck into the fairing right here, and then we'll zip tie it all off later. So the first way I'm going to show you how to do this is without doing the air ride sensor, okay? So if you're just doing the gauges and the oil temperature sensor, this is how you're going to hook it up. If you have air ride, go ahead and skip to the next chapter, and I'll show you how to do that. Inside your package, you're going to have two of these long wire connectors like this. They have male plugs on both ends, red, white, and black wires. Doesn't matter. There's no left and right, okay? On the back side of your gauge, you got female, you got females. You can see I have this one plugged in already. You're going to plug it in, listen for the click, give it a little pull, make sure it's connected. Same thing on this side. You're going to plug that in, listen for the click, give it a little pull, make sure it's connected. You're going to bring your main harness back up into play. You've got your right and your left gauge, which we're not using now. This one is your main plug, goes in the back right here. So we're going to slide this in. Make sure that's connected top and bottom. I'm going to bring this harness over here, right here. This harness from this gauge over here to here, just like that. We're going to bring our oil temperature wire up and it's going to go right in the middle, just like that. But as of right now, it's hooked up. We can go around to the other side of the bike. We can kick it on and make sure everything works. So right now, we're just going to kick the bike on, make sure everything comes on. Got the ignition on. All of our gauges light up. Oil temperature on the left, bolts on the right. You want to look in here, make sure that your gauges are all flush up against the back of the inner fairing. We're going to make sure our right blinker blinks the right side. Left blinker, of course, is going to blink the left side if the right side's working. You run your hazards, make sure that they're working. Everything is working properly. The next chapter of this video will be the air ride sensor install and I need that outer fairing off. So I'm just going to clean that all up, but leave that outer fairing off and we'll go to the next chapter. If you don't have air ride, you're pretty well done. You can go ahead and button up your fairing back up. Now I'm going to skip over to the air ride installation because I need to get those wires hooked up under there before I put all that amp stuff back in. You're going to have this module that's going to go up underneath your fairing and you're also going to have this long wire to go from the sensor up to the module. This is designed for 5 30 seconds airline and it's pushed to connect just like the air ride system 
probably is on your bike. It should be push to connect depending on what brand you have. The very first thing we need to do is connect our brand new T to the sensor. And you're gonna need some Teflon tape like this. You wanna make sure that you wrap that Teflon tape on there before you put that on there so it's sealed correctly. We're gonna take an 11 16 and a half inch wrench. We're gonna go ahead and tighten it down. That. Now you'll look on your wire harness and you'll see that you've got a small plug up here that goes up underneath the fairing and this large triple plug here goes in the end of this sensor. Now if you have some spare 5 30 seconds airline you don't have to cut anything. If you don't have any airline laying around you will have to make a cut in the airline. So you just come over here to your airline, come back off the existing T, cut right in here and then you would just take this new T and put right in that cut, right? So it's just now you've got a complete connection. But if you have an extra piece of 5 30 seconds laying around, it's very simple. Just disconnect it. One's gonna go into one side, one's gonna go into the other, and then we're gonna connect it here. And now we have a complete connection again, and this is where our wire is gonna go up to the fairing. Now this cable's not long enough to run down and your frame and back up and all that stuff into the fairing. So we need to run it pretty straight from A to B. So up here, underneath the tank and into the fairing. So taking the tank off the touring model is super easy. There's only four bolts and just a couple of quick disconnects that you have to make on the wiring and we can get this tank off. We get a little light in here so you can see it, but there's a bolt right here on both sides of the tank. Then on the back side of the tank, you've got a bolt here and a bolt here. That is the only four bolts that physically hold the tank onto the bike. But you have a couple of disconnects that you need to take care of. If you have a stock dash and gas cap on here, you're going to have an overflow line. It comes down this right side, comes down here, usually comes out here by the rear peg. You can cut that zip tie and pull that line up. This side over here, you can see is a hard plastic. So you're just going to disconnect that by pulling on it into that rubber, just like that. Then you find the wire harness coming out from underneath your dash. You're going to follow that back and it should go to a gray connector here underneath the seat right above your ECM. I'm gonna reach in here and disconnect this. Pull that wire up so we're not pulling anything out. If you have any LED lights or anything connected to the bottom of the tank, you need to make sure right now that you get those disconnected as well. So from here, we have to remove the fuel line. Very easy, push up on the silver, pull down on the black. Get yourself a little rag like this to put under it because you will lose just a tad bit of gas. It's a one-way valve. The first time you push this up, it may be a little bit hard. Push up. Pull down, you can see really just a little bit of gas that we lost. So once we have everything disconnected and our four bolts out, all we have to do is slide the tank back, lift it up off the bike. The reason why I say slide it back is you don't want to hit your dash on your ignition up here, especially if you have a painted dash like this guy does. So we're just gonna simply slide this tank back a little bit. I'm gonna get underneath that front end, lift up and pull it off the bike. Now all of our wiring harness runs underneath this cap right here, and this is just a cap. We're just gonna pop this off, and you'll see all the wires that go from the ECM, the computers, up to the fairing. You can set that off out of the way. Bring our new wire up underneath the side cover. Gonna pull it tight. We're gonna run this in this tray. It's okay to zip tie it to another one of the wires to get it to stay. And you want it to come out either the left or the right side. Doesn't matter. Now, if you have an ABS system on the bike, you'll see some other uh, brake lines and stuff that come back through here and go to an ABS module behind your left-hand side cover. Those lines are gonna kind of pop through this cover through this side right here. If you have that, just simply pull this tab up a little bit and pull those out and you can remove this. So once we have it on, we're gonna put the cap back on Make sure everything's snapped on. We can go up to the front of the bike. All right, so what we want to do now is run this up into the inside of the fairing, just like we did the oil temperature sensor. Gonna run this up in here. Give us so plenty of slack down in here. Remember when you zip tie this off to leave plenty of slack for turning. So on the harness, you're going to see a blue and a green. Your blue is going to be for rear air ride. Green will be for front. Now this bike only has rear air ride on it, so we're not going to be using the green one. And then you've got a small connector and a large connector. You can see the difference. One's male, one's female. 
so you can't really mess this up either. So we've got our sensor that comes up. So we've got our sensor that comes up from our air ride, All right? It's gonna go into here, just like that. Blue for the rear, not using the green. So now we have this plugged into the blue wire for rear only. Like I said, we're not gonna be using the green because that's for the front. And that just leaves you with a male and a female. So we can take our hook from our gauge. We can disconnect this one like that male to female and then this one right back in like that so now that we have all that hooked up i'm going to cut the camera real quick i'm going to get all the audio and stuff put back in and then we'll have a look and see what it looks like and we'll also show you the app and how to set everything on the gauges so now we're going to go into our app store whether or not you have an iphone or an android go into your store and download the dakota digital gauge app you must go into setting and enable bluetooth so i'm not going to go through all the settings on this app but if you follow the directions in the booklet that comes with the gauges you can get right through this i just wanted to show you that you needed to download the app onto your phone and then you can have a lot more control over this so i'm going to cut the camera again i'm going to go in my setup here and get everything set up on the bike and then we'll play with it on the app a little bit i'll show you how to change a few things so setting this up is pretty easy we're going to be using our trip button up here on the left side by our clutch just like on the old gauges all of your information on your screen can be done through a series of taps and holds on the button same thing with this system here so you can see when i hold that on hopefully you can see that 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 came on and showed us the mileage and that's what it does on a normal set of gauges so the first thing we need to do is hold that button in and turn the bike on until it says release we're going to release that button and it shows us that we're in setup mode so our screen is going to be in setup mode here right in, right underneath the mile per hour you'll see an arrow pointing over to bluetooth if we click it it goes down to diagnostics if we click it again it goes to lighting click it again it goes to speed tack temp fuel volt displays gear factory reset version exit setup and then it just rolls right back over to bluetooth now while i was doing this i kicked the bike on with the fuel tank and stuff like that disconnected so that's going to throw an engine if you get an engine over here on the right hand side that means that you have some trouble codes you can go in there and clear those through the diagnostics so we just do a series of clicks until the little arrow is pointing at diagnostics we hold that in we let go and now we're in diagnostics. Now it says engine, and we just, with a series of taps, we can go through engine, security, ABS, radio, and back. So we're gonna go right back to engine. We're gonna hold that down to go into engine. Let go, and we have none. If you have a code in there, and it shows like a P code in there, you're gonna click it until it says erase, and it'll have a yes and a no. You click the yes, you hold it down to select the yes, and it will clear that code. Speed is the one that I want you to go to next. You're gonna hold down speed. You're going to release. You're gonna go adjust, unit, service reset, preset odometer. When preset odometer, when the little arrow is pointed at preset odometer, we're gonna hold that in. A release, and we have 10,502 miles. So if this is correct, if it is 10,502 miles, we're going to hold that down, hold to set, release. That odometer reading came straight from the bike. So if that is correct, which it should be, we don't want to, we want to go ahead and set that. If that's correct, as it should be read from the computer, we want to go ahead and set that. You have to do this within the first 100 miles. We're going to hold that down. And that's going to take us over to the next number. We're going to hold that down. It's going to take us over to the five. Hold that down. Take us over to the zero. Hold again. Take us to the two. Hold again. Release. Now it'll say save no. So we want to click it till it says yes. It's a single click. Now it says save yes. We're going to hold that down. 
now our odometer is set to the bike. So downloading the app is definitely going to make doing all of that easier. Now I know there's a lot of riders out there that aren't necessarily smartphone friendly. Um, they may not like dealing with apps and stuff like that. So I wanted to make sure that I got it on camera today, how you set up all of that stuff without using the app. If you're not in setup mode and you open up that app, you're just in read mode. So you can see things, but you can't adjust anything. So make sure you hold that button down while you kick the ignition on until it says release, then you're in setup mode, then you can adjust all that stuff with your app. So that's pretty much it. None of this was really hard. It didn't take any special tools or anything. Like I said, the tools I use today will be in the description down below. If you wanna check those out, maybe you need a couple of those tools, but really it's just a little bit time consuming. So just give yourself plenty of time to run all of your wires. If you're doing the air ride, I highly suggest you follow along in this video and remove that tank. Now that I've seen him on this guy's bike, I think I'm gonna jump on there and look around for our bikes. Like, so we got the 15 road glide over here and the 14 street glide back here. But those might look pretty cool in. If you have any questions on this install, drop it in the comment section down below and I'll help you the best that I can. I check YouTube every day. I'm gonna get out of here, get myself back to work. I hope to see you in the next video, but until then, as always, be safe, keep your knees in the breeze. Thanks for checking out the video. Don't forget to hit that like and that subscribe popping up over here. And don't forget to check out the rest of the channel because we have a ton of bagger related and soft tail videos on our channel. And to get you started, maybe you can check out this one or this one. I'm not really gonna say anything else. You can just click one of those and take you over to another video.